But when you fall, count it all. Count it all. Ca calculate it up. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, it's going to take a while. Got to calculate all the falls so you can count them all joy. Uh -huh. Wherever you fell, if, if, if you fell at the funeral home, if you fell at the grave, wherever your faith fell. Uh -huh. yeah. Just read on this a little bit. Uh, uh, knowing this, yes, sir. Uh, it's something you need to know. The reason you, when you fall, count it off. You need to know something. Know this: that the trial, the testing of, of your faith, it 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 it, it, it produces, it, it work, it produce something. It produce. Patience. All right. All right. You, 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 you know how you, you, you endure, you work 40, 60 hours a week just to get your check. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's working for you. Right. But let patience. Uh -huh. Notice patience is a hurt. Yes, right. That's right. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I better go. Um, um, let, let, let patience have her. Perfect work. See, 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 we get in patience business too much. Cause, cause most of us don't get along with her. That's why I wish y'all help me. Most of us don't like her. Most of us don't invite her. Most of us don't want her in our house, in our room, in our life. Are y'all all right? But let me tell you something. Patience is beautiful, and she ain't going nowhere. Let patience, let, let her, let her have her perfect work. Let, let her get her hair did. Let her get her nails done. Let her pick out a good dress. Let her spend some of your money. Let her have her time with you. All right. Time heal all wounds. But you got to give time, time. Yes. That ye may. See if you let if you let patience yes, have a perfect work that, that that ye may be see see patience working on you working on me that that we may be perfect complete mm -hmm. lacking nothing mm -hmm. you, you may be seated I I I, I almost want to preach and, and just tell y'all the reason a lot of us don't have anything is because we we ain't have no patience all right all right. The reason we lacking stuff is because we won't be friends with patience. Uh, but, but I want to talk about something else today. I want to preach from the subject, finding joy in our trials. Finding joy in our trials. It, it says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. James is, is the brother of Jesus. And he grew up in the house with Jesus. But he didn't know Jesus. He, he knew him as a brother, but he didn't know him as a savior. He, he, he had that, that relationship with him. And, and a lot of us really don't know Jesus because we know him as a gift giver. We know him as a bridge, but we don't know him as a savior. We, we only know him when we need him. Are y'all all right? All right. But to have a true relationship with Jesus, we have to talk to him in good and bad times. And we have to talk to him in day and night times. We have to talk to him at birthday parties and at uh, funeral homes. We have to talk to him in celebrating. And when we're sad, we have to talk to him all the time. Yeah. James wrote this to the 12 tribes. He said, scattered the crowd. But, but then he said something. He said, he, he said to the brethren, which means the family of God. Romans 5 and 1 teaches us that. It says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then John told us about relationship. He talked about the word becoming flesh. He said, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power. What kind of power? To become the sons and daughters of God. Even to them that believe on his name. James here writes about joy in the midst of of trials. Uh -huh. We're going to have some trials. Uh -huh. 
Let, 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 let me say that again because some of y'all tuned me out because because your check done came in and your, your stimulus done came in and you're feeling good and, and you think I ain't preaching to you, but we are going to have some trials. I'm talking about saved and unsaved that reign on the just as well as the unjust. Uh, Jesus says that in this world you will have tribulations. Be of good cheer. Be, have joy in it. Ha, have some joy in it. We're going to have some trials. Yes. So ain't no sense in you getting lemon sour faced and mushy and, and quiet when you go through. You're going to have some trials. Yes. And, 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 and Jesus requires that we save people be joyful in the midst of our trials. Right. I didn't say he asked us to be. He requires us to be. Amen. And trials, how can this be? Because trials are not joyful. So how can we be joyful in the midst of them? That's my first point. My first point is we, 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 we got to look past our trials. Verse 2 through 4, it reads this way. It says, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, any kind, uh, consider it an opportunity. Yeah. Well, Are y'all going to pray with me? Uh, for great joy. When troubles of any kind come your way, consider it a great opportunity for great joy. Now, when, when you're going in something, do you look at it and say, here's an opportunity for me to be joyous? All right. When you go, when we come into our trials, we, we ought to act like we just got into Six Flags. <laughs> Yeah, see how you laughing now? That's how we ought to be. Because now comes an opportunity to receive great joy. Yes, how, how, how can that be, Pastor? He says, for you know that when your faith is tested, uh -huh. when your faith is, is, is tested, see, see, trials and faith, they go hand in hand. Right. Yeah. You, you want more faith, you got to go through more things. Right. 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 Amen. I'm sorry. Amen. And faith is a necessity mm -hmm. for all who come to God, help me Hebrew writer, must first believe that he is God and then that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. But without faith, there's no joy because it is impossible to please him without faith. So he says, he says, he says, so, 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 for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance right. has a chance to grow. Uh -huh. right. okay. Your endurance, you, gosh, I was talking to a, a, a good friend of mine, pastor, preacher, uh, on yesterday. I, I just tell you, it's forward. He, he won't get it, I told you. I was talking to him yesterday, too, and, and we were talking about the, the, the old and the, the, the newcomers in the church, how the old people... They say, we, we, we okay where we are, and it's up to the young people to keep the church going down the road. And I mentioned to him, I said, but I understand now, God has shown me about the older members. Because what it is, it's like a relay race. All right, all right. And the Mother Simmons and the older members of you, y'all ran the first leg. All right. And, and y'all handing the baton off to us and, and, and we're looking at how far we need to go down the road right, but right. we can't see what you saw you saw how far the starting line was yeah. you, you already, you, you ran your leg right, right. and now we're trying to take the baton and tell you come on, keep up right, right. and they're saying, look, I'm going to be behind you yeah. cheering you on yes, but, but we got a long way to go. And you're saying, yeah, but we done come a long way too. Yeah. One day we're going to have to pass the baton to somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. He, he, he says, so, so, so let it, give, give, give it, your endurance has a chance to grow. Yes, the reason you still on your last nerve, you ain't got any more nerves, is because your endurance ain't grew. All right. How does the same thing keep getting on your last nerve? Your last nerve ought to be used to it by now. Your last nerve ought to be on down the road. You still got the same last nerve you had when I got here. He says, so, so let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, when it's fully, when your endurance, when, when you can run the race, 
from start to finish. Here's the problem. Don't start too fast. I'm going I'm to preach and get out y'all way. But grandma will keep coming up. And grandma used to tell me, she said, well, you just, you just gung-ho. you just, just everything, right? There. She said, but let me tell you something. A horse that run hard, he won't run long. You got to pace yourself. If you want joy in trials, you got to pace yourself. Now, you like that, but what I'm telling you is you can't try to help up and get out your situation. You got to endure through it. Because when you rush through it, you don't get all that's meant for you to get out of it. You wonder why you have to keep going through it over and over again? Because you're not getting out of it the first time. But if you get all out of it the first time, you ain't got to go back in it again. But when you rush your way, you, you know what? You, you, you go to the grocery store, you got a list, you rush in there. I don't care how you looked at the list. When you get home, you realize you forgot something. Can I tell y'all something? Yeah. And I gotta go hard. I gotta go walk up. But I gotta tell y'all this right here. Um, listen, it's better to 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 wait, stay longer, and get more than to rush through and not get what you need. It's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. It is the trying of our faith that worketh patience. Patience look forward to better things. Are y'all all right? Patience, patience, patience says, yeah, my heart is broken now. But I'm going to prepare uh, for the day when it's mended. But you know, you, you prepare while you got a broken heart like you're going to have a broken heart all the time. But what patience says is, even though I'm hurt, I got to prepare like I'm happy. Are y'all going to help me? Patience look beyond today's clouds and see tomorrow's sunshine. That's what patience does for us. Jesus set the example at the cross. Hebrews 12 and 2. Looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy. Y'all better get that word. Who, who, the reason he did it. For the joy that was set before him. For that joy he endured the cross. Despising the shame. And is set down at the right hand throne of God. The pain and the shame of the cross made it a terrible trial for Jesus. But Jesus looked beyond these trials to the joy that would fall. Uh -huh. Thank you, Lord. Jesus had joy, yes, sir. but it was awaiting after the cross. Yes, I wish y'all would help me. Yes, he would have the joy of his resurrection and, and the ascension to his father. He was going back home, but it was after the cross. Uh -huh. He would have the joy of the coming rapture and his kingdom to take over the world, but after he, he would have the joy of millions of being saved and sharing mansions in heaven with him, but only after. Oh, I believe y'all get it. I believe I can go ahead and close here now. Jesus had to look past his trials to his joy. We must look past our trials to our joy. My next point is that we must look for the potential of the good in our trials. Uh, yeah. Amen. Wow. Amen. Who wants to look for good going through? No. Mm -hmm. But we must always be looking for the good. Yes, Why? Sir. Because Christ is good. That's right. That's right. That's right. Even in a bad, no, I'm sorry, especially That's in right. a bad situation, yeah. Christ is good. Y'all right. right. yeah, believe me, John. Oftentimes we complain about going through trials mm -hmm. because we don't understand why mm -hmm. or what they are for. We need insight on the trials such as what are we to gain from them? What are we to learn from them? Where do we find the joy in this trial? Uh -huh. There are lessons to be learned in our trials. All right. All right. There are changes to be made in us. Yes, we need wisdom to understand 
what God is doing in our trials. All right. All right, come on. We can ask for his wisdom and receive it. Yes, yeah. Our daddy God imparts this wisdom freely to those who ask for That's it. Right. Huh? Verse 5 says, if you need wisdom, yes, ask our generous God. Yes, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. As I get ready to move on here now. Uh, I learned something. God does not care that we ask. He wants us to ask him. We should ask God, but we should never question God. Well, uh, preacher, what's the difference? Well, you see, my children can ask me whatever they want. I might answer, I might not. <laughs> but what they can't do is question what I do. Because asking is a request to receive something. Questioning me is a challenge against me. We can ask God, but we should never challenge God. We should say, God, may I have peace. May I have understanding. God, do you mind imparting to me what's going on and why it's going on? But we should never go to God and say, why you let this happen to me? And how much longer am I going to have to go through this? And why it got to be me all the time? And why it ain't so-and-so? And I'm tired of this. And I'm, No, you don't complain or you don't question God because God is too good to ever be bad. Right. I'm trying not to get happy here. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's all knowing. He's all power. But he's everywhere present and nowhere absent. Trials assist and, and are the authors of our change. Have you ever noticed that when God wants to change us, we have to go through a trial? Trials are the work in the change. Romans 8 and 28 tells us, and we know, we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. The work is the trials. God may be developing new attitudes in us through trials. God may be activating our talents through trials. God may be imparting wisdom on our issues yeah. through trials. Oh, I wish y'all would say something oh, to me. Oh, God oh. definitely is deepening and strengthening our faith through yeah. trials. Oh, Paul oh. said it this way. Let every man work out his own oh. salvation. Oh, yeah, yeah we, we must learn to look for the potential of the good in the midst of the trials. And I want you to remember one thing as I get ready to sit down. I know I've worried you long enough. But God does not waste. There's not one thing in your life that you've been through that was wasted. I wish y'all help me close here now. Uh, even the time you stubbed your toe, it was a lesson to be learned in it. You were walking around in your house. That you've been in for 20 years in the dark. Taking for granted that you knew where everything was. You were taking your eyesight and the light for granted. Let me tell you something. You are not to walk in the dark once you receive the light. I, y'all don't up there. I got to get ready to get out of here now. My last point is uh, we can look to the power of prayer in our trials. Verse 6 through 8 says that we are invited to ask for help in trials. Hebrews 4 and 15 says, For we have not a high priest, uh, which cannot uh, be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. In other words, we don't have a high priest who cannot sympathize with us in our weakness, but is and was in all points. He was tempted like as we are. And yet he was without sin. Uh, let us therefore. Are y'all going to help me here now? He said, well, weary, let us therefore. Seeing that our high priest had went through the same things that we went through. 
Seeing that our high priest, uh, he was human and he was God. And I know he was because uh, he wept like I wept. He might not have wept at Annie's grave site. But one evening I saw him at his family Lazarus grave site. Are oh, y'all going to help me here now? And uh, I believe Mary and Martha would be a witness for me. They would say, uh, he may not come when you want him. Are uh, y'all going to help me here now? But where uh, he will show up uh, on time. In the Lord, all right. If Dottie Peoples was here, she would say, uh, he is an on time God. And she brought some witnesses with her. Huh? She said, you can ask uh, the children of Israel. When can you ask them where he uh, You asked him uh, in the middle of a trial. They were trapped uh, at the Red Sea. You're talking about trials. Red Sea in front of them. And all their past uh, trying to run them down. In the Lord, all right. You're talking about a trial. My past. Is trying to trample over me. My future is trying to drown me. I wish y'all would help me. But oh, he may not come when you want him. But he's always on time. How do you know that we're in? I know a widow woman from none. In the Lord, all right. She said, I call on the Lord when my boy was sick. But the Lord, he didn't show up in the Lord, all right. I done got excited. Why, where I know that the Lord is going to show up in my situation. That's my joy in the midst of my sorrow. He may not come in a minute. He may not come in a hour. He may not come next week. But Grandmama taught me in the record, you'll be here in God, all right. I saw the widow woman, she said he didn't show up at the hospital, he didn't show up at the funeral home. But when we grabbed my son and went down to bury him, I declare he showed up and showed out in God, all right. I got to get out of here now, but I want to tell y'all something. There's joy in the midst of all my trials. How do you know that we're here? He's able. Somebody here know that my God is able to do anything but fail in the order. He's able to lift up, bow down his. He's able, he's able to lift up late night murders. He's seeing the dark as if it was the light. He's able to scratch the itch that nobody else can get to. How do you know he's able? Where is know he'll be there in the midst of your trials. How do you know that we're here? I got word from the boys in Mark 4 when Jesus told them, let's get in the boat. Where we going? Going over yonder on the other side. In the all right. He's so comfortable in his word that when he speak his word, he'll grab a pillow and go down in the dungeons of your soul and go to sleep in the all right storm start to rise in your life in the all right boys forgot who they had on board thought they could handle their problems on their own I got news for y'all I never had a problem that I could solve in God all right some joyous news. I, I never had a problem that Jesus could not fix in the all right. I had those boys water getting on the ship. Ship about to go down. Somebody said, have you forgot who we got on board? Go down and wake up my 
my joy in the all right. Went down, tapped my joy on his shoulder, looked up, said, Joy, don't you care that we perish? Look at joy, woke up, stretched real good, said, Oh, yeah, a little faith in the all right. Walked on board, looked at the water, saw that the water was not the problem. Called out to what they couldn't see. The wind, you see, they were worried about the water, but the water was only doing what the wind had them do. Y'all don't get me, it's not the problem in your life, it's the one who's causing the problem. Stop looking at your problem, look at the problem solver. Tell the problem solver to tell the problem ringer, get thee behind me. I belong to the Lord in the all right. Peace, be still, good God Almighty. Got happy while we're here. He's my joy in the midst of sorrow. In the all right, I got to close here now. I want to tell you about a great prayer that James gave me. It helps, it's effective in the midst of my trials. But when you ask, when you pray to him, be sure that your faith is in God and God alone. It can't be in your paycheck. It can't be in who laying next to you. It can't be in your mind. It gotta be in God and God alone. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is unsettled as a wave in the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. He said such people should not expect anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. They are unstable not only in that but in everything that they do. What are you saying? Where I saw Jesus in the midst of a trial. What did he do? He said, well, I got a big trial ahead of me in God. All right. After he broke bread. After he pulled wine. After he washed feet. After he sung a hymn. What did he do? He went out to that seminary. He knew he needed power to get through the trial. It was a rough trial. How did you know where he looked in the cup? It was bitter in God. All right. But I'm glad he looked past the bitterness. Saw my soul hanging in the balance. Saw your soul hanging in the balance. Got down on his knees. Began to pray. Father, if it be any other way, let this cup pass. But nevertheless, not my will. You see, he found his joy. One on the other 
was dying out of sin. One in the middle dying for sin. In your right hand, his head and the locks of his shoulder gave up the ghost. I said, Daddy, into thy head. I commend my spirit. He died. Do y'all know that he died? I'm not telling you he went to sleep. I'm not telling you he was in anesthesia. I'm telling you his heart stopped beating. His lungs had no air. He died for your sin, for my sin. I know he died. How do you know they pierced him in his side? Out came blood and water. Redemption, water for my baptism. They took a dead Jesus down, buried him where dead folk go. In a tomb in the all right, stopped up a dead man in a dead tomb with a dead rock. I didn't know where the rock was dead, it couldn't move on his own. The soldiers. The mood of rock and God alright. Let me tell you uh, some good and joyous news. Uh, the same rock uh, that took ten soldiers uh, to roll. Uh, all that living God had to do uh, was speak uh, to that rock. Uh, and that same rock uh, came to life. Uh, rolled uh, out the way. Uh, while every uh, the angel say, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Yeah, he was dead, but he ain't dead no more. I done got happy, I got there. I died one time. I got to die no more. Thank you. 